and welcome to Golf Anatomy 101, where we break down every joint in the golf swing to share with you exactly what needs to be moving, what the set of positions are, and more importantly, why you want to be there in terms of improving the way that we swing a golf club, the way we transfer energy and generate more power in the golf swing. And so what we're talking about today is the role of the left elbow or the lead elbow um, in the golf swing. Uh, and again, if you like this video, don't forget to click the subscribe button below. And that way you'll be notified every single time that we drop another video lesson just like this. Um, I'm joined by Allison TG, who of course is the founder um, of the anatomical absolutes in the golf swing. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, where should the elbow be? Because I know that Hogan himself was a big advocate of, you know, trying to roll the forearms in, but we want to talk about why that would not necessarily be the most advantageous position based on not just it causing the effect of the shoulder perhaps protracting more, which might not be a good thing, um, and also how the position of the elbow might impact the grip, whether it be too strong or too weak. So I'd love to get your thoughts, Ali, and more importantly, um, you know, thank you for your contributions to the game, as well as I'm really excited for people to go ahead and not just learn, uh, but also be able to dive into a really customized seven-day program that they can go ahead and find in the link description below. Yeah. So, well, um, going back to what we're talking about is neutral joint alignment, and we yeah. want the extremities to be able to respond to the powerful rotational motion of the torso. So anytime you can let the joint hang in neutral, you know, you think about gravity, if you think of skeleton, and I just kind of dangled it, right? The joints, due to gravity, would all just hang on that plumb line, and they'd be in neutral. So if the shoulder blade, the rib cage first, and then the shoulder blade are in neutral, that arm should hang in neutral, which means you can grip the club the way that your arms hang, and you don't have to manipulate another joint to have that effect. So, again, it's, it's the less moving part, the better. So if you're sure. fine and straight, shoulder blades there, grip the club, you start adding additional rotation coming from the shoulder, the forearm, or anything, that's going to affect the transfer of energy to the joints. It's going to affect your impact. You're going to have to work harder with your arms and hands to even release the club because you've messed with that natural chain reaction through the extremities. We want our extremities loose and neutral and loose if we can. If possible. 100%. And that's where you know, not just will the position of the elbow be dictated based on if the shoulder is protractor or not in our last video yeah. that we shot together. Of course, we understand we want the shoulder to be down in neutral, slightly depressed. That will dictate that. And so the way that the arm or elbow is going to sit, we'll talk about that more in our program together. You know, what's the optimal angle that we see, of course, is based upon the setup. But what I want to do talk about for a minute or two, which is this whole idea of being plumb. Because I know a lot of the students that I see, they have the tendency of getting here and reaching for the golf ball, which again would be the elbow oh, yeah. would no longer be plumb. And so what we see as right. a result of this is not just the propensity. If I'm reaching for it, so my elbow is not plumb under my shoulder. The shoulders have a tendency of protracting more, not always, but sometimes. But yeah. when you take a look at it, we have a more of an angle between plumb and where my arms are, which certainly invites based on the mass and weight of the club for the club to want to get more narrow and more inside. What it also could. happens- or that is that kind well, of a Mo Norman type setup as well? A, a little bit, which will, um, there's certain things that we're going to dive into in other videos. Don't want to cue too much into okay. that. There's other swing methodologies uh, and how we can actually use the anatomical fundamentals to improve those ideas. Because again, yeah. if you're out here single plane, you know, it's a very big difference between being single plane with the shoulder protracted exactly. versus 100%. So we're going right. to go through that together. Because yeah. uh, there's some, something to be said of mitigating centrifugal force being out here already. So again, uh -huh. but there's also some detriment to that as well, which we're going to go right. through in the, in the other videos. Exactly. But when it comes to, you know, reaching for it in the golf swing, you know, for some people, if I'm reaching for it or too far from the golf ball, I'm going to have the propensity of where I want to move closer to it and make solid contact as well. Exactly. Yeah. And if you come and you're making it really hard to come from the inside to make a true proper weight shift and come, you know, properly dropping into the slot instead of the over top, I think that that type of aesthetic can really lend itself and, and hinder uh, sure. people who struggle with over the top, which is a huge problem for amateur golfers. I think that, uh, you know, having the arms, especially shoulders protracted and reaching out is very, is very common, but it's, it's fixable if you do it anatomically, for sure. A hundred percent. So, um, again, I know this is a shorter video, but again, that, that role of the left elbow, it's important but it's also a symptom of where we aren't set up. And so what we're gonna do in our next video is we're gonna talk about the role of the lead wrist or the right, or the left wrist for a right-handed golfer. You know, exactly how many knuckles should we see? Um, again, you know, what's the proper angle that we need to see in the wrist as well as how it's a variable to understand 
Um, you know, what does it do at the top of the back? Do we want to create flexion? Do we want to cup lead hand? Um, what are the implications of that? So again, as a viewer, if you enjoyed this video, you want to be notified when we drop our next piece of content, uh, go and click the subscribe button below. And if you want to dive deeper with Ali and I, we have a really special seven day program that's actually customized based on different skill levels that you can go ahead and pick up in the link in the description below. Um, Ali, thank you so much for being here, your contributions thank to the you. game as a whole. And I can't wait to dive into the next video where we talk about the, where the role of the lead risk.